how to get started in real estate with no money. And you've likely heard that it could be done, but how? The good news is there's not just one way. There's plenty of ways. You've got options, some easier than others, but all practical and doable. And I'll let you in on seven of them right now. Let's go. I'm gonna go over the basic idea of how to invest in real estate with no money. I'm gonna give you seven different ideas of how you can pull it off yourself. And then if you'd like some additional help with this, at the end, I'll show you how to get it. We've all heard that you need money to make money, right? And when it comes to real estate investing, you need a lot of money, don't you? I mean, don't you need 20% down to get that first property? In some markets, 20%, that can be a whole lot of money. So don't you need that? No. Not necessarily. Although there's a lot of truth to the wisdom that you do need money to make money, it's not an absolute truth. And when it comes to real estate investing, it's actually not true at all. There are plenty of gray areas to play in and many more that completely debunk that wisdom entirely. The truth is that in every business, and real estate is no exception, that people get started in business every single day with little and almost zero money. Many of them just, they get off the ground with a really strong dream and a whole lot of hustle. How do I know this? Because that's exactly how I got started. And I've been fortunate enough to teach thousands of people to do that over the last decade. So here, I'll walk you through seven of the most common ways of how I've been able to do this for people. And then I'm gonna close it out with my most favorite one that has produced my financial freedom. So the first one is referred to as house hacking. And this is actually rather pretty simple. You take your living conditions, wherever it is, whether you own a house already or you are renting, and you hack that property by renting a room out. That's the most common way of doing it. And if you got multiple rooms, you can rent out multiple rooms. Another way where it's commonly done is people buying a duplex or a fourplex and they live in one and rent out the other units. That works very well too. You can also get really creative with your residence, whether you rent out extra space and turn it into maybe storage facility or maybe you got some extra land and you turn that into parking or maybe you have a basement and you can turn that into living quarters and rent that out. That would be perfectly acceptable. And kind of as I alluded to, you don't even need to own your own home to really pull this off. I mean, if you got an extra room in your apartment, go ahead and rent it out. You don't necessarily own the real estate and you're making an investment in that real estate, but you are producing passive income from real estate and that is a form of real estate investing. So when you've saved enough money from this passive income that you're generating, it could be time to actually buy your own house now. This is a really great stepping stone on how a lot of people go about it. And it doesn't take as much money as most people think. I mean, you could go out and qualify for an FHA loan, which can take as little as three, three and a half percent as a down payment. That could be really easily attainable for a lot of people in most markets. Another way is a VA loan. If you've got previous military experience, you can qualify for a property with 0% down. And then once you've done that, you do the same thing. You rent out our room, you rent out the extra space, and you keep creating that passive income until you're ready to do it all over again. So house hacking is a way to invest in real estate without making it a, a part-time business or even a full-time business. It doesn't have to be that much effort either. I mean, if you pick really good roommates to rent out the rooms in your house, it could be actually rather easy. And who knows, if you got just the right ones, it could actually be pretty fun too. Then there's master leases and lease options. I mean, if you're not ready to own a property or don't want to, you could rent one out instead. Master leasing, it's somewhat like house hacking, but kind of on steroids. It's where you're not only renting the property and renting out a room, no, you're renting out a property and re-renting it entirely. So you're renting it out for say, a thousand dollars a month, and you re-rent it out to someone else for $1,100, $1,200 a month, and then you get to keep the difference. And like most rentals, master leasing can be accomplished without a whole lot of upfront money. I mean, maybe last month's, first month's rent, a security deposit, that's it, and you're in. And maybe master leasing just isn't good enough. You can increase your opportunities by putting an option to purchase on the property while you lease it out. And what this is, is you negotiate a predetermined price somewhere in the future of where you are going to make an offer to purchase the property. Now, it is not an obligation to purchase, it's just giving you the first right of refusal. For example, you might negotiate a purchase price of say $200,000 
for the property that you are master leasing. And you've got a two year window to execute that transaction, to make that purchase. Now over those two years, if that property were to appreciate to $230,000, you've got your purchase price of 200 locked in. So at that moment, when it comes time to execute that option, you've got a $30,000 spread there. You can choose to buy the property with $30,000 of equity in place, or you could do something like sell your option. You could sell your option to somebody else who will step in, buy it for $200,000, and they'll have the equity in place. And then you can make an arrangement with that buyer to split that equity. Maybe you get 5,000, 10,000 bucks for them to get that option to purchase. So if that house were to appreciate for $230,000, you could sell that option contract, say for 220. That would give your buyer a $10,000 equity position and you $20,000 in your pocket, creating a win-win scenario for both of you. And all of that can happen with no out-of-pocket money. Number three, short-term rentals. And you've probably heard of them referred to as Airbnbs or VRBOs. Those are the mega marketplaces that do the marketing for landlords to find these short-term tenants, people that come in and rent the property, say, by the night rather than by the month. And you can use this as a really low cost entry point to get started in real estate. This could also be categorized as another form of house hacking, where you could get your master lease in place and then take the property, place it on a short term rental website like an Airbnb or a VRBO to where you can find short term tenants. My good friends, Dave and Jill, they've done this very thing. They've gone out and negotiated with different property owners, master leases, a half a dozen of them or so I believe right now. And they've taken these properties, they've put them on these short term rental sites. They have generated a nice passive income for themselves where they don't have to work. That's all that they do. And the income from these short term rentals has grown and grown and grown as this type of living situation or vacationing situation for people has grown in popularity. I went to dinner with them actually just uh, last week and they had told me that they just hit an all-time high last month. They generated $30,000 from their short-term rentals and they don't see any signs of it stopping. And that was just six properties. And I've been so blown away by these numbers and their stories and having them share with me their experiences, I'm actually taking on my very first short-term rental next month. Now before I break down three more ways of getting started in real estate with no money, if this is kind of getting your wheels turning, let me know, click the subscribe button and stay tuned here because I post videos like this each and every week, multiple times a week that show you how to make money, that show you how to level up your real estate investing. Click the subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. Number four, partnerships. If you don't happen to have all the money yourself to get started in real estate investing, maybe you bring on a partner and use their money to get started. While there are many ways to partner, one of the more common ways is to form a credit partnership. That's where the partner comes in, say with the down payment and the credit score to acquire the property and then you manage the property on their behalf and you can share in the profits, you can share in the appreciation. Another really great way to get started. A modification that you could make to this partnership so you have a little bit more upside for yourself is your credit partner could come in, they could use their credit score, they could come in with a down payment, they close on the property, they own it, and then you lease it back from them with an option to purchase in the future. You then sublease it to a tenant you manage the day-to-day -day activities of property management and you get to keep the difference between what you've leased it from your partner for and what you are renting it to this new tenant for. Now, before your option expires, you have the opportunity to go out and get some traditional financing to purchase the property back. If this is done correctly, you can control the appreciation and the income of this property and you got all in for really no money out of your pocket. And all that really took was a little bit of creativity and a little bit of hustle. Number five, bird dogging. Now this is essentially where you go out and you look for deals for other real estate investors. And this really takes no money at all. Essentially, you connect with a real estate investor or two or three or more and you interview them finding out what each one of them wants. And then you just kind of keep your eyes and ears open for what they want and when you find it, you share with them that property and should they close, they'll give you a nice little referral fee. Now you can be as passive or as active as you want with this, but it takes absolutely no money to get involved. And this is pretty easy to do. All it takes is a quick computer search for a RIA meeting in your area. RIA stands for Real Estate Investor Association. And this is where once a month, a group of real estate investors will come together and basically talk shop. They'll, there'll be buyers there, there'll be sellers there, there'll be lenders there, and you go there, you network, and that's how you can get started. It's one of the ways I got started by finding other real estate investors their deals. Number six, wholesaling. Now this is the practice of 
buying property low and selling it low and doing it really, really fast. But you're doing it so fast that you never actually take ownership of the property that you stepped in to buy. So you go out and you find a good deal. You put it under contract. And under the, in that contract, you are typically given 30, 45, 60 days of inspection period, sometimes referred to as due diligence or often referred to as due diligence. And during that period, now it's your duty to go and find a new buyer to step in your place. And for a fee, they will step in your place and they will close the deal and they'll buy the property themselves. Now, many wholesalers will start as bird dogs and they are essentially the same thing. The big distinction here is, is the wholesaler is actually putting the property under contract. And because they have the property under contract, because they've taken that extra step, they control the deal, which means they also control their profit. So they're not necessarily working so much for a small little bird dog fee. Now they're getting real estate profits. And that essentially is adding an extra zero to your paycheck. And many people just don't get their start wholesaling. They will turn it into an actual business and make a whole lot of money. But keep in mind, it's a job. It's a high paying job, but it's a job nonetheless. You're constantly in pursuit of the deal. The last way I'll share with you is my favorite. And it too is also a job in the beginning, but ultimately done right can turn into your financial freedom where it is no longer a job. And that's number seven, seller financing. So what this is, instead of you going to a bank to get a loan to purchase a property, you're gonna negotiate the price and terms directly with the seller and the seller is gonna step in and become your bank. So essentially, you're buying the property over time. You've agreed on a price, but you've agreed to with the seller that you're gonna make them payments over time until it adds up to that price. And this is my favorite way to buy real estate. It's the way I primarily do it still today. And it's my favorite because I'm not bound by bank requirements. I'm not bound by lending guidelines. It's just a, a conversation and agreement between the seller and myself. As long as you and the seller agree, anything goes. You're limited only by your own creativity. And to give you an example, if you met a seller that was willing to sell you their house for a bucket of hot wings, that would be a viable transaction. Now, I've never purchased a property for a bucket of hot wings, but I want you to know you are only limited by your own creativity. As long as you and the seller agree, anything goes, you can purchase a property that way. And if you'd like to get started purchasing property via creative financing, I've got the best free course for you, the best place for you to start. Take a look at what I put together for you at epicbreakthrough.com. You can go ahead and take that domain name, type it into your browser, or I'll put a link down below in the description for your convenience. Now you know seven different ways to get started in real estate with no money. Thanks for watching, take care, I'll see you soon.